Okay, sorry for the delay. I guess it always happens when I'm about to uh, present. So, um, today I'll be talking about the next major WordPress release, 5.3, um, and run through a little bit of um, some of the things that you, as um, some of the new changes for developers and for end users as well. So, my name is Edmund, I'm a developer. Um, I work at this local agency, Nerd Media. I've been developing with WordPress for about four to five years now. <clears throat> and I do mostly um, like plugin development. So not, not so much of a theme developer. And okay. Um, so the scheduled release date for 5.3 is uh, 12 November. And right now we are at um, RC2, release candidate two. So if everything goes well, then the, the official um, release will be as the scheduled date. And what, can, what you can expect from this release, um, new blog editor features and improvements, um, a new default theme, 2020, and admin, some admin uh, UI enhancements. And okay, so for the blog editor, um, so as some of you might already know, this blog editor actually exists as a, as a separate plugin itself. So um, it's constantly receiving a lot of up updates every now and then. So with this new um, WordPress version, 12 of the updates um, from the plugin will be merged into this um, uh, 5.3. So um, one of the biggest improvements is um, the load time. So they did a test with a post of 36,000 words and 1,000 blocks, and um, there they noticed a 1.5 seconds in um, load time reduction, which is quite impressive. So um, there's one of the new um, blocks they're going to include is called the group block. It allows you to um, basically just nest all your blocks into this little container so that you can actually save it and then reuse it this actually sets, um, it's actually in preparation for the future um, where people are going to use um, block editor to create templates instead of the current um, way of creating templates whereby they're just using PHP. So what you can do with this group blocks is that you can just nest um, like an image and text and then just reuse it in other pages. And you can just move the whole thing around. And also some other improvements to the existing blocks, we, we have um, some improvements include um, changes to the column block, image block, table block, button block, and more. So I'll just go through this few, um, starting with the group blocks. So as you can see, this is um, how it looks like. So you can just create a group, group block and then insert um, or nest other blocks inside. So it, it allows um, white and full width settings. And it also allows you to align all your child blocks. So this is one group. Uh, it consists of the, uh, a, a headline and the media and um, the text uh, block. So this is the full width. And then you can go back to white width. And the next is uh, improvement to the current column block. For this one, we have, um, right now we have this new uh, width setting. So it allows you to um, adjust the width of uh, individual columns. So previously you can, you cannot, there's no um, settings for you to adjust the width. You can only select uh, how many columns you want. So right now you can change the width um, through the settings over there. And it also has this layout selector. So when you um, add the column block, it, it um, actually prompts you to choose how many um, column layout you, do you want. Which is, if you guys missed it, it's at the start. So when you first add the column block, it's going to show you this little prompt. Okay, and next we have the image block. It's um, not so much changes to this one, except that they allow you to um, change the style of the image. For example, from a default to a circle um, mask setting. 
So it's quite um, useful for maybe like your avatar picture or something. And the next we have um, table block. I'm not sure if how many of you are still using um, tables, but in this um, change, they allow you to uh, in include headers and footers to the to the table. So it's like a heading, and then there's a footer at the, at the bottom, and allows you to add colors as well. So this is the header, item one, item two, and then this is the body, and then at the bottom, um, you can also add footer, and you can have the stripe um, styling as well. Okay, um, and the button block. It's uh, not so much. It allows you to add um, border radius. There's a settings for you to um, include border radius to your button, which is, um, and it also supports um, this target thing. So what it allows you to do is that it, um, you can choose to open, open the link in the new tab, which is quite basic, but previously I think they don't have this um, setting. So at the bottom there, they allow you to choose whether you want to open it in the new tab, and the slider for you to adjust the, the border radius. Okay, and next we have the new theme. It's called 2020. So when 5.3 is um, released, this will be the new default theme. Um, so as you can see, this theme, it's, um, it focuses on clarity and readability. So it actually has its own, um, they, they included this new typeface, Inter. It's a new open source um, font. And um, it's going to be shipped together with the theme. So what this, um, as you can see, it's pretty, uh, it um, gives a very strong and bold personality when it comes to um, headers. So the theme itself is, it's, um, they mentioned that you can just use the theme um, to do all kinds of layouts. And it's very focused on um, being compatible with the blog editor. So here are some of the mock screenshots that they provide. As you can see, it's very, um, I feel that to me, when I first see it, it feels very um, focused on content creation, like block, because of the single centered column. And the typeface obviously looks, um, looks very uh, readable, like what they say. And uh, everything looks very clean. I, I think it's, a lot of people mentioned that it's gonna, it's actually, from what they say, it's actually gonna be the nicest um, default theme so far. And um, looking at the way things are going, it seems like it's going to be that way. So um, full support for the blog editor, um, definitely. So they actually encourage people to um, use um, the blog editor to create all kinds of layouts because it's, um, I think, out of the box itself, it's um, pretty um, minimal. So they focus on a lot of... Um, of you using uh, the column and the group blocks to create all, the, all kinds of uh, layouts. So there's also custom colors as well. Um, you can select the background color. All these settings are in the customizer, custom colors, um, header and footer background color. And there's this new um, template. It's called cover template. So as you can see, what it does is um, provides you this big image overlay and then the title of the page will be on top of the image. And you can also change the color of the, this overlay as well. Is this a video? I think it's a video. Oh, yeah. And then there's this little arrow for you to anchor down to the bottom. I think I missed the video part for this one as well. One thing, I've, one cool thing I find, um, I realize is that the if you notice the the font actually changes um, colors itself according to the background color. So there's this uh, automatic um, setting for it, for they want to ensure that the uh, it's the contrast is there. They don't want you to select a dark background and then use a dark font. So this is quite uh, interesting. And. Okay, for this theme, it comes with um, two menus. On the top, there's this, um, the expanded horizontal menu, and then there's the um, off-canvas menu. So on mobile, it comes with, um, there's also a menu at the footer, and on mobile, this is how it looks like. 
So you can, uh, in the customizer, you can choose whether you want to have both menus at the top or only just. Um, so for, for, the, for the top menu, if, actually, if you don't assign any menu items to the off canvas menu, then this part will not appear. So you only have the standard um, expanded menu. So in this case, I actually um, assigned two different menus to, um, to the expanded and the off, um, off canvas menu. That's why it's appearing over here. OK, so next. Um, uh, next, uh, we have some admin enhancements. Um, one of them, I think it's quite a big improvement, is it's it's that they allow you to um, upload big images right now. I'm not sure if how many of you have actually tried uploading from uh, your phone directly, because usually when you take a picture of your phone, it's going to be at least like 3 megapixels or something. So previously, before this um, version, what it, what it does is when you try to upload a big image, and if your server times out, for example, then that image will not be um, will not be uploaded. So when you want to re-upload again, you have to go through the whole process and then hope that your server will not time out. So what this change um, brings is that when you um, upload a big image, for example, and if your server times out, um, they will store the, those that have, have already been uploaded, they will actually store it over there. And then when you try to upload it again, the upload will resume um, automatically. So as you know, when you upload one image to WordPress, actually there are, WordPress itself generates about um, three default images, I think three or four. So um, one, one good thing about this is, for example, if you upload a super large image, like a 5,000 pixel image, um, with this new change, it actually, um, they will detect that um, the image is ex it's above the default um, settings. They have this default 2,560 pixel um, threshold limit. So if anything above that limit, they will actually reduce the image automatic, automatically to that size um, so that the whole thing is still um, web optimized. It's still, um, it still doesn't, it's more, um, yeah, it's still, it, it doesn't take too long to load. But also the cool thing is that the original image is still stored inside your, um, your uploads folder, even though it's not used. So what it's actually showing is the optimized version. Um, yeah, but having said that, it's still always better to um, crop and optimize your image. So don't really, don't try, uh, don't rely on um, this to uh, op optimize all your images because um, it might not do uh, might might not do a good job. Might do might not do something that you. Um, I mean, at the end, at the end product might not appear as um, what you want. So. It's always good for me. I always go to Photoshop and then I just um, save the image as web and resize it to the correct um, size that I want to use. So image rotation is also a big thing. Um, for me, I, when I was creating this um, application um, last year, so what I require the user to do is to upload a photo from their phone. And when they upload the photo, I, I was, um, the image itself is, it will just um, rotate to the left or right. So what I need to do is that I need to install a, plug, a plugin which will automatically rotate the image back to normal. Which is um, which is quite uh, interesting. I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that to um, happen. But right now with this uh, release, they will actually fix that bug. So you don't have to install any, any um, additional plugins. It will just um, automatically rotate the image based on the XF orientation uh, metadata. So when you take a picture with your phone, um, the image itself inside they have this data, to uh, inc which includes the orientation of the image. So. Um, when you upload to WordPress, WordPress will use that data to decide what um, orientation the image will be in. Okay, and next we have this um, small little um, feature, admin email notification. This happens when you, um, this is actually a security measure. So, so for example, if you never log into your admin, um, to your site for about six months, I think the default value is six months. And then after six months, if you want to log in, they will show you this prompt um, asking you that uh, to confirm your verification, your admin email, because um, if not, if your admin email is different, then you might get locked out. So this is just uh, some security measure to ensure that you are still using the same email. Um, there's a filter for you to change the default um, duration. So default is six months, you can just change it to one month or something like that. So 
if you haven't been if if you haven't logged into your site for one month, and then this thing will show up. Can be a little bit annoying, but I think it's still better to be safe. Is that for every admin? Uh, or just the general I, side admin? I think it's for everyone that tries to log into the backend. Yeah. We need thousands of emails. Or maybe not, because it only it mentions that it's only administration email. So maybe only the those with administrator role, then you get it, I guess. Just yeah. Like because yeah, which is the most important one. <laughs> This administration email is the one. In the is it the general setting? Yeah, the one in the the one in the settings um, where you can receive. Um, is it password? Um, yeah. When the new user signs up and then you receive all the notification. So I guess it only applies for administrator. Then. <laughs> and this um, show hide password toggle, I think it's quite common right now in um, other applications. So what you can do is you click on that icon and then it actually shows you the password. To make sure that you you are know you know you're not typing the wrong password, <laughs> it's um, available for both mobile and um, desktop. I think it's I keep forgetting to play the video. Yeah, something like this. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> no, I think I took this from somewhere else. <laughs> 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 Okay, some, um, yeah, this is one of the many um, UI changes. You can, s it's not very major. You probably wouldn't really notice it, but it actually brings about um, this coherency in the whole admin. So this is um, how it looks after, and that is um, how it looks right now. So as you can see, some of the buttons and the fonts um, and the border are actually um, different. So. It, when I when I look in when I look at it um, first, it actually feels very more um, cohesive. Feels like everything is um, together, even though it's um, yeah, even though it's not a, lot, a big change. I think after you use it a while, you'll notice it as well. Um, so yeah, improve improve color contrast for form fields and buttons. And okay, so for developers, there are some other exciting features. Um, so PHP 7.4 7 is going to be released end of November, um, and WordPress 5.3 will, will be fully supported. Um, so it's also one of the ways they're going to modernize the code, the code base. Um, and in WordPress 5.3, will be you'll be if you look into the source code for some of the functions and functions and classes, you'll notice that um, the spread operator is being used. Um, this actually brings about performance um, improvements. Um, so, developers should also look at the change log to make sure that um, how to make sure that uh, their code is also up to date. Because there are, um, if I'm not wrong, there are some of the functions that are being deprecated. So, it's good to um, take a look and make sure that when you update your site, it's still functioning well. So, next is the date time component fixes. This is actually quite a big um, issue. Um, so what it does is, actually, I, I included this this link at the bo bottom over here. It's, it, it links to a, this um, a talk by one of the component maintainers. So he explains that how WordPress is actually breaking all the time when it comes to um, displaying time zones and GMT and all that kind of stuff. Um, with this update, uh, they actually fix displaying of date if you actually use a lot of um, Output a lot of uh, all your date, uh, your post date, that kind of stuff. You might not really uh, notice the difference, but from what I heard is, if you try and create a post and then, if you try and change the time zone, in the settings, there's I um, mean in, in your admin settings there's this um, drop down for you to change the time zone. Then that's where things will start to get a bit funky. Not really, I mean you don't really often change the time zone, right? But so when it happens, then you will realize that. WordPress is actually handling time in a very, uh, very, very shaky and uh, prone to error uh, way. So I, if you're really interested in this, it's, uh, you, you should go and watch the video. I think it's about 40, 40 minutes. It really explains what is um, the issue right now. Okay, and next would be the REST API. We have some uh, new um, features. One is the performance increase when you are 
when you're using a large a when you're dealing with large API responses. So with this improvement, we can expect a 30, 30 to 40% performance increase. And the next is um, this fields, underscore fields parameters now supports uh, nested fields. I think this is, at least for me, I think this is quite uh, a very interesting uh, change because usually right now, if you want to, for example, in this um, output, if you want to display the button block text, because this is a nested um, field. So what you need to do is you have to go to your JavaScript and then do a title.rendered to show the button block. But with, um, with this, uh, with this um, new param param parameter, I think it's a video. No, it's not a video. With this new uh, feature, you can just um, append title.rendered to the end, and then you just get the button block over there the, as the output. So you can just output immediately without having to go to title and then .rendered. OK, and next is search engine indexing. This is, um, so in, in the admin settings, you have this search, search engine visibility. So if you are working on staging, for example, you probably want to check this one so that um, the search, search engine will not index your site. But what it actually does is it just, it, it just uh, inputs this disallow um, statement in your robot text. So it, it tells the um, search engine not to uh, crawl your site. But it doesn't mean when the search engine is not crawling your site, it doesn't mean that your site will not get indexed. Um, so with this change, they will just remove the previous way of doing that, and then they will just include this new robots uh, meta tag. It actually uh, includes no index and no follow. So right now, when you, uh, if you check the box, you can uh, be sure that your site will not be indexed, and there will be no further crawling as well. OK, and I think, yeah, so if you are interested in um, checking it out before the 12th of November, you can install this plugin called WordPress Beta Tester, and then go to the Tools Beta Testing and check this option to make sure that you are, you are testing the latest uh, release. Then you go to your dashboard and update, the, update uh, the version. And if you are interested to find out more about the other changes, you can click on, go to this link, and um, it's, uh, they just released this few guides, so it actually includes all the major improvements uh, in WordPress 5.3. Okay, um, I think that's all I have. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Can I use short codes in blog editor? Um, yes. Yeah, you can. I don't think there's any um, changes in that. Yeah. There's a shortcode block. There's a yeah, short code block. Yeah, so can you so, use code in that? Yeah. Okay. One other change is the error handling. For the media, is it? Yeah, for media. So if you're um, yeah, so from what I read, when you upload the media, sometimes you will experience that um, what HTTP error without any um, explanation what is wrong. So with this um, update, I think they're going to expand and uh, be more descriptive about the error. So and it covers the, f the various um, 500 errors as well. So you will, you will not just get this HTTP error anymore, and at least you know what's, what's wrong. Yep. Do you have the test, um, the release in your, the installation in your com? If not, I can run through the, the, the theme. Actually, you connect directly to your computer. Oh yeah, it's working already. Yeah. Um, I'll just see if I can run through. Maybe I'll just show you the, the how the theme looks like. I think, like you said, I think it is actually going to be a usable thing. Yeah, actually, um, probably the most since maybe even 2013. <laughs> yeah, but actually, how many of how many of us actually use the default theme? I I'm not sure. Maybe maybe for um, blogging or I'm thinking about WordCamp next year. I'm like, oh, we're gonna yeah, do but the same thing because um, I mean, if you want to build um, sites, <laughs> you probably go with something like like Genesis or other other more popular themes. To me, I feel that the default theme it's it's nice and it's um. But I would use it for mainly just for blogging. I would I probably wouldn't use that for um, for web development, other site development. Though, like if you have like a very small company and you're just looking at getting like five pages up. Yeah, if it, if it's a small site, then 
yeah, it's, it's okay. But I mean, in the first place, we are probably already um, used to the theme that we use. So every time when they release a new default theme, it doesn't really make sense to just change it. But it's, it's, it's good to, to, to know that it's there. It's, and it looks um, really presentable as well. Okay, let me see if I, oh. <laughs> not working. But it's not, <coughs> it's not even uh, loading it. No, no, it's in your own display. This way. Uh, the com is so laggy. So it's coming on the 12th, WordCamp. Yeah, what can we use is on the second, is it? Yeah. So it's going to be after. So we'll show on that. We'll give a rundown of everything then. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's working. I can't. Yeah. Work. It's not detecting now. Um, too bad I can't show you the <laughs> demo that I have. But if you're interested, like what I mentioned, you can download the, te the beta tester plugin and install it. And then you will see the new theme. Terrible. <laughs>